So I'm going to organize uh, some of this stuff. I'm going to hold down Shift and select a bunch of these, and then go ahead and click and drag that little four dots in here, and I can just move all these around, hold down Shift, grab these, and we'll go ahead and start organizing this a little bit. In fact, let's take these ones down here, hold down Shift, select them all, and change these all to shapes. You can make these, you know, any shape you want. In fact, there's even more shapes if you click the all shapes there. I'm going to change these to like rounded uh, shapes. And what a shape is, it gives you a little bit more options than just a sticky note here. So if you click a shape, you're going to see um, we have a border style. So you can go through here, and right now it's set to no border, but we can go ahead and drop in like a dark green border. You can crank up the thickness if you want to, the opacity of the border. If you want it dotted, small dots, dashes, uh, what color it is over here. And you can always, you can add more colors in here. You can just kind of pick a color. You can use an eyedropper to pick a uh, color from something on your board. Font, font size, and also uh, font formatting. So if you double click in here, you can select all these and say make them all bold. Or you can select just these ones here and you can make these not bold. And this is all part of the shape. If you want to make uh, just a shape, Again, you can tap S on your keyboard, or you can go over here to your toolbar and select a shape. So if you want to make just a box, grab that shape. You can drag this out, and it just gonna, it's going to pick up the formatting of the previous shape that you just made. If you want to choose formatting from another object, you can click another object, Control-Alt-C, and that'll take that formatting. Select your new shape, Control-Alt-V, that'll paste the formatting of this shape to the formatting of this shape. And like I mentioned before, you can go through here. You can change uh, the font border, the thickness and the uh, type. And if you double click in here, that'll give you text options. So by default, you know, it's centered in the middle. You can, of course, you know, left justify that, put it up here at the top. And if you want to, you can use these as a framing device. We're getting into frames in just a second, but you can actually use shapes. If you click a shape, you're going to see it's in front of these. You just right click this. We'll say send it back or hit page down. That'll put it back behind. And now we have a shape that's around these other ones. Uh, if you just want it to uh, just be a, a border, you can go in here to the fill and say, yeah, no fill. Or if you want it to be, you know, filled, but maybe not super opacity, uh, you can just drop this down to maybe 10%. So that'll kind of separate it out from the rest of your board. You've got some text here if you want to. This to be more of a title. You can go in here and hit bold or any, any of these two. You know, when I go in here and hit bold and italic, uh, just control B is bold and unbold. Uh, control I is italic. So pretty self-explanatory there. Speaking of frames, if you want to frame all these objects, you can literally go over here and click on the frame button or click F, or you can hold down shift, select all these objects, go to the three, three dots here and say create frame. That'll create a frame that'll encompass all of these. A uh, frame is a cool thing. You can select the frame and that'll keep everything kind of nested inside of it and it'll go ahead and move stuff around. Uh, and like we mentioned before, if you hold down Alt and you click an object, that'll make a copy of it. If you have a frame select, you hold down Alt and drag, uh, it'll go ahead and create a copy of all the contents and the frame. You can rename frames by going up here and renaming it and then uh, double click in here and uh, naming that as well. Uh, one really cool thing about frames real quick is you can click a frame and if you're if it's just kind of working stuff, you don't want people to get distracted by it, you can click this eyeball on temporarily and that'll go ahead and hide stuff. Uh, this is an upgraded feature, uh, but it's nice to uh, you know have some working stuff that you don't want to distract anybody. You can go ahead and turn that eyeball off. Uh, with the frame selected, you also see a lock and that's actually available to you with any object you have selected. You can uh, lock it. Uh, this is useful for two reasons. Number one, if you don't want anybody to move anything, like say you don't want anybody to ever move this frame, I uh, can go up here and you say lock it. And the hotkey for that is control L. Uh, if you want to unlock it, just go in here and long press. And you also see if I lock it again, uh, you can make it so that anyone can unlock or only the person and only the board owner can unlock it. Uh, we'll go ahead and unlock that. Uh, one way this might be useful is, uh, you know, if you go in here and we'll take this frame, let's go ahead and delete it. That'll leave my contents here uh, without a frame. So if I want to go ahead and select these, I can select these shapes. So shift clicking these. If I want to select multiple. I can hold down shift and select multiple. Uh, but you're going to see it's going to select that background frame. Now, this isn't really a frame. It's just a shape sitting back there. Uh, so what I can try to do is since, we, again, we sent this frame to the back, by right clicking and sending it to the back, you can select that, go ahead and lock it. And so now when I hold down shift and select these, it's not going to select this back frame here. It'll only select the contents. So that's another useful feature uh, of locking. And again, just select the object, long press to unlock, and you're back where you started.
Now, when you select multiple objects, you can hold down shift and select multiple objects uh, and you have a filter up here. So if I just wanted to select just the notes and, you know, let's say these are a little more scattered in here. I don't, you know, it wouldn't work this disorganized. You know what, looking can organize a little bit better. Hold on, I'll just go ahead and kind of mix and mix and match these things. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this shape, shape out of here. So we've got a bunch of stuff in here. It's like, I just wanna change the formatting on just the note cards. So hold down shift, select all the objects, go in here to filter and say, you know what, just give me them sticky notes. And I'm gonna go through here and we'll do go and change that color of those sticky notes. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention on the sticky notes is you're not just bound to just the size of the sticky notes. So if you're typing in here, you got a lot of stuff. Uh, you can resize these, so you can click and pull out, and that'll make you a kind of an ultra-wide uh, sticky note, and you can scale these objects. Just like anything else in uh, Miro, you can scale the object up or down. Uh, so if you you know want to have kind of a header sticky note, you can make this bigger, kind of sit up here, and then you can have you know little, little notes uh, underneath it. Of course, we're kind of mixing uh, notes and shapes. If you want to move these shapes out of the way, again, just shift-drag over here, filter this down to just the shapes, and scoot them right over, and then drag these, go ahead and snap these uh, back in order here. So again, pretty quick and easy to organize your stuff.